May I pick up right here? Excuse me. There is an article in the most recent Wesleyan Theological Journal by Dean Fleming on contextualizing the gospel in which he says the Holy Spirit is the true contextualizer. That Wesley, I don't think he said Brzee, but uh, that uh, they took this biblical heritage and message and contextualized it for their time. And, uh, but to keep the emphasis on the Holy Spirit, I think that Brzee's emphasis on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, whether we understand it precisely as he did, was a way of uh, emphasizing the power of the Spirit and the working of the Holy Spirit in the uh, presentation and of the message as a transforming message for individuals and society. And I'd recommend, if you haven't seen that, to look at that article. It's an excellent article on the contextualization of the gospel by Dean Fleming, the most recent issue of WTS, the WTJ. Right. Can you hear about our distinctives? Do we know what they are? Can you articulate them? Who sets the distinctives? Does it fall on Jesus? Who speaks them for us? Prevenient grace, saving grace, sanctifying grace, and finally glorifying grace. <laughs> it's a gospel of grace. Amen. And at Nazarene Seminary, I taught John West's theology so that those young people would see that we're not just evangelicals, we have a distinctive message. And uh, I found more than one saying, I know now who we are. We have rediscovered Wesley. We need to go farther and discover more deeply what Wesleyanism is all about. But our hope is to understand, I mean, our great need is to get back into that stream, not uh, slavishly, but to get in the stream of uh, understanding that is Wesleyan that takes into account scripture, tradition, experience, and reason, uh, and let it... Uh, translate itself into a dynamic message that excites us and that transforms our hearers. Dr. Wiseman, I know I've spoken too much and I hope this will be the last word, but I'd like to respond to your question. Also what uh, Kent Hill was saying, and I heard uh, um, my good friend Fletcher Tink talking about the nature of sin. We have not, as a Wesleyan holiness movement, preached or understood or taught the full Wesleyan doctrine of sin. We've latched on to the one definition of sin as a willful breach of the known law of God and stopped there. Whereas Wesley was everywhere in his Christian uh, treatise, Plain Account of Christian Perfection, and in his preaching, reminding us that even those who are perfect in love fall short of uh, the perfect expression of love and need the blood of atonement, involuntary transgression, sins of surprise. And uh, we can uh, make room for that, which was, I never heard that back in my early days. And one of the reasons I have gone back to Wesley is to give a more, uh, a fuller basis for understanding what our need is. And when we understand this, even though we have experienced the transforming grace of God that has cleansed our hearts, we are aware of the need every moment of God's grace, and we understand why Wesley, when he was dying, said, I the chief of sinners am, but Jesus died for me. That has created consternation in some congregations. I shared that with Dr. Sam Young. He said, keep on preaching at Brother Greathouse. We need this uh, double understanding of sin. We haven't had it, and so that's where I think Wesley comes into the picture, at least one point. I could say more, but that's all. O oh God, our Father, we pray for a fresh infusion of your Holy Spirit into our minds that we may be willing to face honestly the issues that confront us, in our consciences that we may have the courage 
in our own assignments to be faithful to do your will, whether it is a matter of popularity or criticism, help us to be Nazarenes. And grant, Lord, that you will give to us as a people a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that our schools, our colleges, our seminaries will somehow pass the torch on to the generation that is to come ahead so that they will have a deep burning conviction that you have raised us up for a specific purpose to declare the full counsel of God and grant that we may spend the time necessary in the searching of the scriptures to understand what it means to have a pure heart and to have perfect love and to be perfect as you have designed us to be fulfilling your calling and your intent for us as persons and as a church. Give to us a biblical faith fired by the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that some way you will keep us from just going off into the, as a little eddy in American church history. Help us, we pray, to become who we are. We believe that we are in the, on the brink of a fresh breaking forth of your grace and power. And we pray that there will be waves of glory that will come over our college campuses and in our local churches and in each of our hearts, for it's only by your power, by your spirit, that we will be able to accomplish the task you've given us. Help us to be faithful in our understanding and searching of the scriptures. Help us to be honest in our application to our own personal lives. Help us to learn how to be confessional while we recognize what you have done for us in your heart, in our hearts through your grace. Help us to be your holy people in the world, fulfilling your vision for the people of God that began with Abraham <laughs> and that has caught us up even today in this glorious enterprise. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.